It's up to you this year. It's up to you. The ball's in your fucking court. No more fucking around. You want your life to be better? I can't help you. Lee can't help you. Joe Rogan can't help you. Ari can't help you. God can't help you. Only you can help you. Grab your fucking balls, get a fucking notebook, and write down what the fuck you're gonna do this year. And this is it. You're not gonna have these problems. The drugs, the cigarettes, it all starts fucking today, all right? No more fucking excuses. That's the fucking, this is the year of the fucking soldier. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? What the hell are we all waiting for to start attacking life? We're waiting for the fucking stars to align? Back when I was growing up, the song came out. All I need is a miracle. Well, guess what? That miracle ain't coming. There is no perfect time to start. You gotta start now with changing your life. We're all being tested in life. And guess what? This is one test you can't cheat on. We all have our own test. Some of us are obese. Some of us are depressed. Some of us are insecure. You extra gears to get your deal with the life. And the only way to overcome it is for you and you alone to face it. You have to do your best work when you're at least motivated. So those days you don't want to do it, guess what you got to do? You got to suck the fuck up and do it. Stay hard. It's grind season, homie. It's not about today. It's about the future. You do the work now. Do the work now. It's time to stay focused, man. Now, don't be fooled by the outside. God is working behind the scenes. In that realm that you can't see, things have shifted. The moment you received what you believed for, things started lining up in your favor. Good breaks, the right people, healing, abundance started hitting your way. We talk about how unfair it is. We talk about how fucking hard it is. We talk about how nobody gets it. And guess what? All those things are fucking true. It's not fucking fair. Most people don't get it. Most people have no idea how fucking hard it is for you. And guess what? They're never gonna. So why are you screaming about it? Take this opportunity to recognize that the chaos in your life is actually forging you and improving you because you're choosing to press on when everybody else is falling off. The personality of a person, the ways of a person, the thoughts, the deeds, the actions, is all based around his heart. For what is a man? A man is his heart. A lying, cheating heart means a lying, cheating man. A loving, merciful heart means a loving, merciful man. A living heart means a living man. A dead heart means a dead man. Regardless to man's title, regardless to man's wealth, rank, or position, if the heart is not great, then he cannot be great. But if the heart is great, that man remains great under all circumstances, rich or poor, large or small, so it is the heart that makes one large or small. Teaching people how to find that generous present moment and actually relax in the unknown and dissociate from their body, dissociate from their environment and dissociate from time, the predictable future and the familiar past. Causes them for some reason to get a reboot. That, that to me is taking all of your attention or disinvesting all of your attention out of this three dimensional reality and that's uh, when the door to creation or the mystical moment really begins to happen for people. It's easy to use your childhood as a crutch instead of seeing it as a chisel. There are a lot of divorces out there, so that means a lot of kids come from broken homes. I always hear people say, my family is so dysfunctional, using it as an excuse or something. 
but is not really a valid excuse because everybody's family is dysfunctional in some way. There are so many crutches people want to use to justify themselves, but for me, you have to eliminate every single one of them. Get rid of them all. Then tell yourself it's up to you. What are you going to do now that you let go of all those crutches? Blaming others is an easy way out. God will put dreams in your heart that you can't accomplish on your own. You may not have the experience, the funds, the connections, but God does. You're just one transfer away from seeing that dream come to pass. I think a lot of us out here, we don't have control, we don't have the whistle. There's someone out there blowing that whistle and we hit the dirt. Some of us choose to stay down, but it's that mother who constantly gets up as fast as they can. Those are the mother that make it in life. So it's our job to always be ready for the whistle. Who is controlling your life? Who's making the choices in your life every single day? What's pulling the strings in your life? And before you say yourself, I really want you to think about that. Every day you wake up, did you make the choices that you know you needed to make to progress your life? I need that. I need it badly. Of course it's gonna get hard. Of course there's all kind of stuff that can with your focus. But you gotta, you gotta stick that shit out, man. Ladies, fellas, come on. It's another level to this shit, man. If you can see it here, and you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. A lot of times people believe in certain things, but they keep to themselves. They don't put it out there. You truly believe in it. If you become vocal with it, you are creating that law of attraction and it will become reality. Because your dreams have to be bigger than all your fears and all your consequences. What makes people go back is you dream too small. See, your problem in life ain't if you aim too high and you miss it. Your problem in life is if you lay, aim too low and you hit it. That's you messed up now. So when you aim to the moon and you miss, you still amongst the stars. You ask the person, what do you want? Man, I want to be diamond. Tell me something I don't know. Everybody wants it. But the raw reality of it is, everybody don't get it. And the crazy thing is, if you want it, you can get it. It's not like somebody is stopping you or holding the gun to your head and telling you, you can't get it. It's a matter of will, it's a matter of hard work, it's a matter of sacrifice, it's a matter of dedication, it's a matter of commitment. And I'm not talking about the commitment that says, yes, I'll show up, not that commitment. I'm talking about the commitment, I'm gonna stay true to what I said I would do long after the move that I set it in has left. Look guys, this pursuing success, becoming someone who is abnormal, becoming someone who sets the fucking standard for others, becoming someone who shows the rest of the world what is possible is a very difficult path. You are going to have people sh you. You are going to have unexpected circumstances arise. You are going to have all these things that you never fucking counted on come and smack you in the face over and over and over again. This is just part of being on that path. Like what's the GPS that's on the end of our decisions and our choices? Like where is it really taking us? Because at the end of the day in life, it's only two things that matter. And it's not about the biggest car, it's not about the biggest house, it's not about the bank account, it's only two things that matter. It's about who we become in life, and it's about what we give back to life. Please don't be the people in this world that become a public success, but they're private failures.
God has an incredible life for you. All you got to do is ask him for it. Be willing to put in the work. But now this work part is hard. Success is hard. But let me ask you a question. Ain't not being successful hard too? So now which hard you want? You want the hard with some options and some benefits or you want the hard with ain't nothing going on? That's true of your goals and dreams as well. There's an inevitability to success. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, when we adopt one more, when we adopt compound pounding. Do you know the kind of confidence you begin to have when you just accept in your life that I am going to be relentless, I'm always gonna do extra, and you accept the fact that all things break down over time. All the barriers will go away, all the obstacles will go away, everything in your way will go away if you keep after it over an extended period of time. Most people overestimate what they can do in a year. They do, they set up goals for a year and they overestimate where they're gonna to get to. And they dramatically underestimate what they can do in a decade. You have the power within you as you begin to develop your consciousness, as you hold the vision of what it is that you wanna do, as you decide to answer this small voice within you, because as you respond to this voice, that's telling you, you ought to do this. The way will come, ideas will come to you. You will begin to attract things you need and things that you don't even know that you need right now. You will develop the skills in the process. Every single one of you who is struggling right now, you need to understand this. What you're going through right now, it's necessary because what's happening right now is you are forging the fucking skills. You are forging the determination. You are forging the grit. You are forging the fortitude. You are forging all the fucking things that nobody else is gaining because they're sitting on their hands and you're willing to push through. Efficient but not effective. I did things right, but I never did the right thing. Efficient, not effective. Hollow. Jelly bean. Hard on the outside, soft on the inside. Don't possess nothing. Most people go through life as volunteer victims. They go through life volunteering to be victims, giving excuses on why they're not pursuing their greatness, giving excuses on why they're not doing the things that they want to do, putting it off again and again and again, wasting valuable time. Life is very valuable, ladies and gentlemen. Time is very valuable, and it's very fragile. You've got to decide to do what you can right now, and don't delay. Live your, living your life like a sense of urgency. Everything I've ever been a part of, everything I've ever been connected to, and everything I've aspired to do, everything I've ever wanted to accomplish, at a certain point I understood my perspective about it had to be right because my perspective will always affect my performance. How I view what I do will always affect how I do what I do. When you're complaining, you know what you're doing? You're focusing on everything that's wrong in your life. What you focus on, you move towards. Yep. And also what you focus on, you attract. So you're complaining, you know what you're doing? You're focusing on all the in your life. You're complaining. You can take control of your life and be a person that's not a creature, so he's a creator. Because, sure, life is tough, but it gets a lot easier when you're laughing at it. So, despite the suffering, in fact, to spite the suffering, to spite the hardship, to spite the challenges, laugh at them all. They can't stand it when you do. And they all get easier. Yes, laugh at them all. Laughter wins. You will have good days and you'll have bad days, but you will always learn something more or something new and you will learn more overall on bad days than good days. 
You will learn more about yourself, you'll learn more about relationships, you'll learn about life and principles, and it'll build your character. You may have arms and legs, but unless you know three things. Number one, who are you and what your value is? Number two, what is your purpose here in life? And number three, what is your destiny when you're done here? If you don't know the answers of any of those three questions, you're more disabled than I. We want the shortcut to the winner's podium. We need instant gratification. And when we don't get the short-term glory, sometimes we lose sight of those long-term goals. They fade. We lose focus. So we stop the daily tasks and the daily disciplines that will allow us to achieve our goals. Then a day slips by, and then another day. Then a day turns into a week, and a week into a year, and you look up in six weeks, or six months, or six years, and you've made no progress, none. Why do you do this thing every single day, and what does it mean to you? I want you to ask yourself those two questions every single day. That the tragedy of life does not lie in not reaching your goals. The tragedy lies in not having any goals to reach. It isn't a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity not to dream. It's not a disaster to be unable to capture your ideas, but it is a disaster to have no ideas to capture. It's not a disgrace not to reach for the stars, but it is a disgrace to have no stars to reach. Right, because we all know it. Character is not something we inherit. Character is something we gotta wake up every single day. We gotta fight and we gotta build it. Embed that long-term goal in your mind. Burn it into your soul. Think about it. Write about it. Talk about it, hang it up on your wall, but most important, do something about it every day. You've got 60 years to put yourself together and God only knows what you could become. And that's so, that message is so much more, it's so funny because it's so, it's such an attack, but it's so positive because there's faith there in the, in the potential that makes up the person rather than the miserable actuality that happens to be manifesting itself at the moment. And so you've got to begin to think about the things you want to materialize in your life on a regular basis and think about it repetitiously. Literally the things that we obsess about become the things that we possess in our lives. Most people, those variable 9% of the thoughts is the new thing they're worried about, the new fear they have, the new response to an email they have to make, and they never dictate the terms. Remember this, your mind is a weapon and you gotta begin to use it and pick that weapon up and control it. Most people are out of control with their mind. They don't point it at something. They let the world point it and they miss fire all the time. So today, I want you to pick up that weapon that is your mind and begin to point it at the things you want, knowing that it's a magnet that draws to you the things in your life that you would most like to have or that you would most not like to have. Constantly note that you're not what you could be. to take responsibility for that and to, and to commit yourself, like body and soul, to the attainment of that ideal. Commitment is staying true to what you said you would do long after the move that you set it in has left. Commitment is staying true to what you said you would do long after the move that you set it in has left. Similarly, there is no such thing as my life and your life. There is just a living cosmos. If you capture more life, then you will see you have more grace. 
The depth, dimension and scope of your life is determined by how much life you capture within you. It doesn't matter what kind of body you have, what kind of intelligence you have. If you have not captured substantial life within you, you will live a small life. That's how it is. I say you got goals and dreams, things that you're reaching for, things that will make you stretch, things that will challenge you. I say don't lose that passion and that drive for life. It will keep you alive. Stand up in yourself. You got to fight. You will have opposition. Things going to happen to you in life. It's called life and it's not personal. But what it takes to go down that unforgiving race to winning, they don't want to do because it's just too hard. Here's the secret. If you were to meditate for 20 years, this is where you'd finally get to. Just be yourself. But be all of you. Using the energy of my personality to actually serve the purpose of my soul. And that purpose, I'm here to tell you, gets revealed to you daily. It is not just one thing. It is the thread that is connecting the dots of everything that you do. Like, is your dedication that cheap? Is your level of commitment that cheap to where all it takes is for something not to go the way that I want it to go? And I'm not the same individual and the level of which I once cared, I no longer care that deep about. Like, is it that cheap? Because that goal isn't going to achieve itself. It is all on you. The quote says, um, when you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person that walked into it. That's what the storm is all about. When you can't control what's happening to you, control how you respond to it. That's where your power is. When you can become in the midst of activity, this is the true state of nature. Happiness and comfort is not real happiness. When you can be happy in the midst of hardship, then you can see the true potential of the mind. Happiness and comfort is not real happiness. When you can be happy in the midst of hardship, then you can see the true potential of the mind. Each and every one of you, at some point in your life, you are going to hit rock bottom. The question isn't, will you hit rock bottom? The question is, what are you going to do with yourself when it happens? In order to, to reach your goals and do some incredible things, ladies and gentlemen, I say that you have something special. You have got to have faith and ignorance. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in what you're doing. You've got to believe in your product. You've got to believe in your services. You've got to believe in a power greater than yourself. You've got to believe in the power of pursuit. And you've got to be ignorant enough to know that you don't know what you can't do. Don't rule anything out. It's when are you going to start showing up for you? Perfect time that exists is right now, man. Don't wait for the clouds to clear for you to show up. Learn how to dance in the rain and allow what's trying to use you you use it for your good. If the game will break, go against you. Don't let up, put on more steam. If the game will break, goes against you. Don't let up, put on more steam. You can never lose faith. That's the key. You have to believe in something that you can't see. You have to believe when you can't, when you don't see no way how. You have to buckle down and keep believing. God is always coming. Here's the deal. The moment you ask God for something, he boxes it up and he ships it to you. Here's the problem with the package. 
He never gives you the date that is going to arrive. It's going to come. He just don't tell you when. I came back with a vengeance. I was driven by a purpose. I'm telling you, you'll never be what you're supposed to be. You'll never have what you're supposed to have. You'll never ball out until you got a purpose for why you do what you do. The people who blew up, they blew up because there was something that was going wrong in their life and they took that pain and they turned that pain into something. What if you lose? What if you fail? What if things don't work out? So? So what? It's not about the goals that you reach, it's about what you become in the process. That's what it's about. The price you will pay for not making your dream come true is far greater than the one that you will pay to make it come true. The price you will pay, the suffering you will go through to make your dream come true is incredibly small, infinitely smaller than the price you will pay if you never do. You'll pay that one the rest of your life. I am so uninterested in empty dreamers, I can't see straight. What I care about, do you have the fortitude to fail? In life, with your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, the things that you seek to do, the things that you aspire to do, the things that you want to accomplish, Never forget, first and foremost, how brilliant you are. Never forget the people that played a part in you getting in this position. Never forget what you're made out of. But on the road to success, on the road to accomplishment, on the road to evolving and development, people burn out, people quit, and people underachieve because life makes them forget why they do it. But you owe it to yourself to release the past so you can free yourself from the things that happened that disappointed you and move into a bold and brilliant and gorgeous future. Please do not let a stained past deny your spotless future. You're paying too much attention to everything around you, not enough attention to this one. But the quality of your life is essentially determined by how you carry this one. Yes or no? This moment, what kind of clothes you're wearing, what kind of car you parked outside, what kind of home you live in does not determine the quality of your life. This moment, how joyful are you feeling within yourself determines the quality of your life, isn't it so? Nothing has been done about it. You think it'll happen in consequence and you're setting impossible goals for your happiness. The thing that's so interesting about being alive is that you're all in. No matter what you do, you're all in. This is gonna kill you. So I think you might as well play the most magnificent game you can while you're waiting. Because do you have anything better to do? Why not pick the best thing possible that you could do? Because you're more powerful than you think. Way more powerful than you think. I mean, God only knows what you are in the final analysis. You're blind to your own weaknesses, but you're also blind to your own strengths. How far could you take that? How much good could you do? Well, I would say, why don't you find out? Are you telling the story of your own life, or are you hiding in the story of other people's lives? We hide in the story of other people's lives through gossip of people that are around us, talking bad about them. We hide in reality TV, we hide in the news, we hide in politicians, and we hide pretending we play for these sports teams. Those are all stories about other people's lives. Are you in the story of your own life? Doing more work than anybody else is required for greatness. The most important step we'll ever take in life is our next one. But a lot of us get our feet stuck in concrete. We get our feet stuck in concrete because we're afraid to make enemies. We're afraid to speak what's in our mind. All that fear clouds your brain, clouds your thinking. One thing in life, you're going to always have haters. Embrace them. The key to freedom is knowledge. And the key to knowledge is truth. The key to knowledge is truth. 
It's possible for you to live your dream. It's necessary that you associate with winners, that you work your system, that you are relentless, that you never give up. It's you. You've got to take personal responsibility. You've got to make it your personal business to make it happen. And you've got to resolve within yourself that I can do this, that it's hard. But you've got to say, I'm the one. But you know it's going to be hard. But find out what will make it worth it for you. Fear. Fear is normal. Every person feels fear at some point. What should you do? Step. Step. Take the step. Step aggressively toward your fear. That is the step into bravery. We are scared of what we don't know. And there is but one way to confront that fear. Step. Go. And that simple action, this simple attitude answers so many questions. How do you get to the gym every day? Step. Go. How do you change your diet? Step. Go. How do you overcome fear of failure or fear of success or fear of fear itself? Step. Go. How do you face the fear of the unknown? Step. Go. We're built to walk uphill. And when you reach the pinnacle of the hill, you want to stop and appreciate the vision, but the next thing you want is a higher hill in the distance because it's the uphill climb that, it's, it's from the uphill climb that we derive our value. You want a goal that you can never attain, right? So you can always move closer to the goal that recedes as you move towards it. Don't wait anymore. Don't think anymore. Don't plan anymore. Don't contemplate anymore. Don't make any more excuses or justifications. Don't rationalize anything else. No, 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 no. Instead, be aggressive. Take action now. Spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here and the decisions we make in this moment which are based in either love or fear. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. There are many ways to get the things that we want for ourselves in our lives. But basically, it all begins with how we choose to think. As you think, so shall you be. Seven little words that I think are perhaps the most important things that we can learn and master in our lives. Because as you pursue that goal, you put yourself together and your life does get better and richer and more abundant. And that's why the highest levels of virtue and goal are in some sense transcendent. You want them to be above everything you're doing so you can continually move towards something that's more sublime and better. That's what you are. You're, you're here to live, not to, not to sleep. Excuses sound best to the person that's making them up because you grew up in a household with dysfunction, drama, mental, spiritual, physical, and emotional abuse. Doesn't mean that that's the outcome of what your life, your career is destined to be. And what I know for sure is that the biggest choices begin and end with you. Your internal big questions. Who do I want to be in the world? My relationship to source energy, to all that is God. 
I'm not talking about what you believe in God. I'm talking about your experience of that which is all life, which is divine and universal. I'm talking about the big deal. Being connected and aligned with that. When you are tuned in and charged into that, whenever you feel empty, you go inside yourself and you connect to the source and you know that all things are possible. Have a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing. One of the central principles of my life is that no one knows enough to be a pessimist. When we close our mind to what is possible for us or what is possible for humanity, closes off the genius that resides and lives in each and every one of us. If the lion is the king of the jungle, how can he be the king of the jungle? If he's not the biggest, he can't be the fastest because that's a cheater. He can't be the smartest. So he's not the biggest, the fastest, or the smartest. So how does the lion become the king of the jungle? His mentality. That's the only difference of a lion and an elephant. When a lion walks up and sees an elephant, he thinks lunch. And it's all mentality. He may be outnumbered by a pack of hyenas, but I'm king of my jungle because of my mentality. My number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You gotta be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, no boss can do it. You versus you. Life will not always be 70 and sunny. Life is the ultimate competitor. It's relentless. It will continue to attack when you least expect it. We must learn to adapt and overcome to any and all obstacles that are in front of us. We have to evolve. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it. And if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold poverty, famish or gulf, sickness or pain or body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if dogged and grim you besiege and beset it, with the help of God you'll get it. I want you to know something, that the bigger your dream is, I want you to understand the harder the grind. There, listen to me. Luck is for leprechauns, and you ain't green. I don't, I'm, not bringing you, I'm not bringing you a fairy tale. What I am telling you is that if you're willing to go beast mode, you can have whatever you want. I'm a living example. You can start from nothing. He said, I want what all other men want. He said, I guarantee you, when I line up and they line up, I want what all other men want. I guarantee you, when you line up in your one-on-one -on -one battles, you want what all other men want. The same way you want the victory, they want the victory. I want what all other men want. He said, but when the pressure hits, when the opposition hits, when the challenge hits, when the pain creeps in, when the uncertainty creeps in, when the cuts, when the scars, when the bruises come, I want what all other men want. He said, but when the opposition and adversity shows up, I just want a little bit more than they wanted. And so that's how I conquer, and that's how nobody has ever beaten me yet. I just want one thing from you. As great as you are, as skilled as you are, 
as talented as you are, I just want one thing from you. Never allow life to make you forget why you do what you do. Lazy people do a little work and think they should be winning, but winners work as hard as possible and still worry if they're being lazy. You might not be a lion yet. Some of you in this room, you might be an ant. You might have small beginnings. You might not have a lot of money. You might not have a lot of resources. But he's determined, he's strong, he has a dream and a goal, and he'll do whatever it takes. And I need you to understand that the bigger your dream is, the earlier you're gonna have to get up. The longer you're gonna have to stay up. The bigger your dream is, the more effort you're gonna have to put in. You'll never see it for those of you who are 70%, 70% beast mode, 30% gazelle. That's just enough for that other person, I'll do you. When the obstacle gets in front of you, don't let it stop you. Don't let it deter you. Now get around that motherfucker. Me versus me. It means that I'm going to try to be the best that I can be, the strongest, the fastest, the smartest human being that I can become. That is what I'm going to go for. And it doesn't matter that I will not be better than others when I compare myself to them. No. I will look at others who do achieve greatness in a category and I will say, look at what is possible. How close can I get to that greatness? How close can I get to that glory? But my glory doesn't happen in front of a crowd. It doesn't happen in a stadium or on a stage. There are no medals handed out. It happens in the darkness of the early morning, in solitude. Only thing noble about victimhood is overcoming it. You can understand that the only thing noble about your life is going to be what you show people is actually possible, okay? We're all put here for a reason. And it's not to go over here and beat on this drum about what should be and what's not fair. The world will never be fair. The world will never, ever be fair. Someone will always have an easier path than you. Someone will always have a more difficult path than you. Regardless of how difficult you think your path is, there's lots of people out there who have had that same path and actually won huge with that path. If we respect it the way we say we respect it, if we love it the way we say we love it, if we cherish it the way we say we cherish it, every single day should be nothing less than excellence. You might not always be your best, but you can always bring me your best. Then claim one victory that no one can ever take away from me, ever. And the victory that is earned every single day because I will not stop. There was, there's more to us than there is to the horror his nature is bent on our destruction, bad as culture is. As malevolent as you are in, in the darkest part of your heart, and that's plenty malevolent, the, the possibility that's within you that can well up the, the courage and the truth and the ability and the skill and, and the willingness to set things right, if you are willing to set them right, is more powerful than all of that. And so it's so interesting. It was, it was proof for me of an old saying I, I read from Carl Jung. It's an alchemical motif in Sterquilinus Inventor, which is what you most want to be found will be found where you least want to look, essentially. And it's so interesting because it means that if you're willing to turn around and to stand up, say, and stand up straight and face the darkness like fully what you discover at the darkest part is the brightest light and not something that's so much worth discovering because there's going to be terrible darkness in your life.
We bought into this, this complete falsehood that at some point you're going to have the courage, at some point you're going to have the confidence, and it's total... Um, it's, it's complete garbage. And so there are so many people in the world, and, and, and you know, you may be watching this right now, and you have these incredible ideas, and what you think is missing is motivation. And that's not true. Because the way that our minds are wired, and the fact about human beings, is that we are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable, or scary, or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things, because our brains are trying to keep us alive. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're going to have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary, which sets up this problem for all of us. You're never going to feel like it. Motivation's garbage. You, you only feel motivated to do the things that are easy. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out. Now think about this. And the feeling draws the event back. So you could have the intent that you want wealth, you want health, you want success. That's your intent, that's your thought. But if you're waiting for the experience to happen, to feel it, then you're not drawing the experience to you because you're not feeling the emotion, right? So then teaching people once again how to balance their thoughts and feelings because you can, you can enter that cycle either place. We start opening our heart, we start elevating the body's energy, and then those emotions can drive certain thoughts of your future. Other times, you open your awareness, you create brain coherence, you have the vision of your future, you begin to emotionally experience it. However you want to jump on that cycle, uh, and then sustain it, because the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you're drawing your future to you. So everything, all your goals, all your dreams, all your visions, you're gonna have to get your body up and drag it through space every day to pay off that, you know, that home that's in your future, right? When you create from the field instead of from matter, when you use a vibrational match between your energy and some potential, and your thoughts and feelings are coherent, now you are going to begin to collapse time and space where the experience is gonna be drawn to you. Now, now you're in a vortex to your destiny and now you don't have to go anywhere to get it because you're not playing by the rules. Wherever you are isn't good enough and to some degree that's actually a good thing because if it was good enough, well, there's nothing for you to do. So it's actually maybe a good thing that it's insufficient. And that might be why sometimes having less is, is better than having more. And, and I don't want to be a Pollyanna about that. But it isn't always the case that starting with little is... If you start with little, you start with more possibility. Everyone has an element that they thrive in. If you take someone out of it, their element, they won't be the same. So we have to create an environment where we thrive. And then finally, it's energy. We, some of us love high energy environments, high pressure. Some of us succeed in low energy environments and low pressure. Figuring out your energy and the frequency on which you operate best will help you thrive as well. So for me, those are the three E's. to really create a thriving environment. Know your element, know your environment, and know your energy. And so at all times, if I see anything going wrong, I'm going, is my element out of alignment? Is my environment out of alignment? Or is my energy out of alignment? And that's a great three question test you can do to yourself when you don't think things are going right. And all you have to do is bring that back.
You think when it comes to success, like getting there, making it, achieving it, the way that you see somebody that's achieved it now, however you define that, and you look at them and you think, oh my God, they're amazing. You think you're gonna think the same thing about yourself, and you won't. The thing that you'll resent isn't whether or not you make it. The thing that you'll resent is, now that you know you can, will you actually try? Trying is what you're gonna judge yourself on. Your family won't weep for you if you don't succeed. Two things will happen on your deathbed if you failed. You really went for something and you failed. One, they will all mourn that you weren't able to live your life because you were so myopically focused on the goal that you forgot to enjoy the journey and somewhere along the way you stopped loving. You stopped loving them, you stopped loving yourself because all you could see was succeeding, getting that thing, the tick on the paper box, and you lost your way. That's possibility number one. Possibility number two is they're like, hey, this tried, and it was inspiring. And just to see them go day after day after day in the face of so much defeat, but to have the will and determination to keep going, Winston Churchill said, and I quote, success is going from failure to failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. It doesn't matter if you win, that's not success. The success is going from the failure to the failure to the failure and still being excited to show up. It's like, this is how I liken success. Success is like love. You know the beautiful part about love? Getting the sh kicked out of you and then coming back for more. That's so hopeful, that's so optimistic, to be like, whoa, I just had my ass handed to me, and yet I wanna be vulnerable again, I wanna go through this again, I wanna open myself up to this, I wanna be touched by that, I wanna feel that. But people can get behind that, man, we can get excited about that. We wanna be friends with people like that, we wanna feel that in our own lives, that willingness to, to have tasted defeat and still come in open and not jaded, how beautiful is that? You know, I believe that self-love is very important. You know, I'm always talking about loving oneself. I never trust anybody who tells me he or she loves me if the person doesn't love herself or himself. So I like to look at self-love. It is very important that it comes from within, that you have a sense of yourself, so that when you walk into an office, you don't go alone. Bring your people with you. Bring everybody who has loved you. Life is always happening for you, not to you. If you believe it's happening to you, of course it is. You know, you look for what's wrong, what's wrong is always available. But if you train yourself to look for what's right and you find it, you won't be the person sitting on the curb crying or feeling sorry or... You'll be like, I'm gonna crush it and I'm gonna find the good in this. It's not good on the surface, but it becomes good when you do something with it. Many people in this world that are wanting, waiting, saying, asking, begging, hoping, will someone help me cross? We all have the power to be a point of light. Head down endurance. And that'll get you through bad times, that endurance. It's, it's, it's such an underrepresented virtue, that ability to trudge forward under a unfairly burdensome load is a testament to character if you can and then it's something that should be encouraged and valued i meant to encourage and i would i would like to say something else about that finding courage in the leaders and in you who will become leaders uh, courage is the most impo important of all the virtues because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently, you see?
healthy. You can't be consistently kind or fair or humane or generous. Not without courage, because if you don't have it, sooner or later you'll stop and say, ah, the threat is too much, the, the difficulty is too, too high, the, the challenge is, is too great. When you are able to align who you are, who you've become in the world, with really what you've come to do in the world, when your personality serves the soul. The more you allow your pain to render you inactive, the worse the outcome, including exacerbation of the pain. And depression is a pain disorder, and so that's very much worth thinking about too. It's like, move forward, move forward, move forward. It's like one bloody foot in front of the other, up the hill. People say, you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing and it's totally true and the reason is is because it's so hard that if you don't any rational person would give up it's really hard and you have to do it over a sustained period of time so if you don't love it if you're not having fun doing it you don't really love it you're gonna give up and that's what happens to most people actually if you really look at at, at the ones that uh, ended up you know, being successful, unquote, in the eyes of society and the ones that didn't. Oftentimes, it, it's the ones that were successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. And the ones that, that didn't love it quit because they're sane, right? Who would want to put up with this stuff if you don't love it? There is thought and there is emotion. The way you think is the way you emote, isn't it so? Thought is agile, it changes direction just like that. Emotion is little sappy, it takes time to turn around. So that period you struggle as if there are two dimensions of thing happening. And it's worth asking yourself, it's like, drop what you're doing that's foolish, that you know is foolish and pick a name that's worthwhile, you know, to make things better for yourself, like you're worth taking care of, like you're worth something, you know, and to surround yourself with people who, who believe the same and who are what rejoicing in your accomplishments and unhappy when you fail, right? And you're comparing yourself to your accomplishments of yesterday and not to someone else's today so that you're not jealous and bitter. And you put your own house in order so that you're not cursing the world when some of its disarray might be your fault. And you're trying to pursue something meaningful and you're doing your best to tell the truth and all of that. And then you see what happens. Who the hell are you? You know, you think you're a miracle of some bloody bizarre sort. We've been around for three and a half billion years. You know, every single one of your relatives propagated successfully. And here you are, against all possible odds. And yet, God only knows what's inside you. This capacity for consciousness, the capacity to confront potential and to turn it into something good. That's our responsibility. And it really is who we are. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. What is the dream for you? What does the Creator's dream hold for you? So often, we spend our lives wishing and hoping and hoping and wishing and desiring things. This is what I know for sure. You don't get what you wish for. You don't even get what you hope for. You get what you believe. See, unforgettable has everything to do with serving at a level so high, so big, so massive, that people feel like they have to change their lives because they crossed your path. 
And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. One thing that you must do to yourself is, you are absolutely truthful to yourself. With yourself, you are one hundred percent truthful. Otherwise, all kinds of tricks keep happening. Well, an apple tree is not trying to be an oak tree, but an apple tree wants to be a full-fledged apple tree. That effort is on in every life. So is it in human beings. But the problem with humanity is just this, that for every other creature, nature has drawn two lines. Within these two lines, they live and die. So their idea of full-fledged is hitting the ceiling of their life. But if a human being hits a ceiling, he gets frustrated and miserable. So essentially, what human life is, when life was in the other forms of life that you see on the planet, nature determined a certain compulsive, instinctive ways of functioning. Once you become human, these lines have been removed. You can act consciously. That means what you call as human potential is not of any kind of measurable limit. It can go as far as you desire or as, as far as you have the courage to walk. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. There is no reason not to follow your heart. I believe that if we are honest with ourselves, that the most fascinating problem in the world is who am I? You don't know how the universe shines the stars, constellates the constellation, and galactifies the galaxies. You don't know. But that doesn't mean to say that you aren't doing it in just the same way as you're breathing without knowing how you breathe. Now this now moment in which I'm talking and you're listening is eternity. That although we have somehow conned ourselves into the notion that this moment is rather ordinary, and that we may not feel very well, and that uh, we're sort of vaguely frustrated and worried and so on, and that it ought to be changed. This is it, so you don't need to do anything at all. What do you mean? What do you feel when you say the word I? I, myself. I don't think there can be any more fascinating preoccupation than that. And so, therefore, it's so important to consider this question, what do I desire? Because 
the moment you have a situation where you are really in control of things, that is to say in which the future is almost completely predictable. A completely predictable future is already the past. You've had it. That's not what you want. You want a surprise. You don't know what that's going to be, because obviously it wouldn't be a surprise if you did. I, a stranger and afraid, in a world I never made. And so therefore we speak of confronting reality, facing the facts. We speak of coming into this world and this whole sensation that we are brought up to have of being an island of consciousness locked up in a bag of skin, facing outside us a world that is profoundly alien to us in the sense that what is outside me is not me. This sets up a fundamental sensation of hostility and estrangement. Existence requires, always as its third, you can get the rocks knocking, the sun and the moisture, the tree crashing to the ground, the sun pouring out electrical energy. But none of these things constitute existence until related with the neurological complex. But then you have to look backwards and say at the same time, the neurological complex belongs to the same world as the sun. It's a physical pattern, physical behavior, physical energy. But it, it, it takes this complexity of pattern to evoke the world. If you investigate yourself, what do you mean by you? How do you know you exist? In terms of what? What do you discover if you push that? Why, you discover everything else that you thought wasn't you. You only know you exist because you reflect the external world. So investigate you and you'll get the external world. Music differs from, say, travel. When you travel, you are trying to get somewhere. And of course, we, because being a very compulsive and purposive culture, are busy getting everywhere faster and faster and faster till we eliminate the distance between places. We thought of life by analogy with a journey, with a pilgrimage, which had a serious purpose at the end, and the thing was to get to that end, success or whatever it is, or maybe heaven after you're dead. But we missed the point the whole way along. It was a musical thing and you were supposed to sing or to dance while the music was being played. That existence is musical in nature. That is to say that it is not serious. It is the play of all kinds of patterns. Happiness is an emotional response to an outcome. If I win, I will be happy. If I don't, I won't. It's an if-then, cause and effect, quid pro quo, standard that we cannot sustain because we immediately raise it every time we attain it. You see, happiness, happiness demands a certain outcome. It is result reliant. And I say, if happiness is what you're after, then you're gonna be let down frequently and you're gonna be unhappy much of your time. Joy, though, joy is a different thing. It's something else. Joy is not a choice. It's not a response to some result. It's a constant. 
Joy is the feeling that we have from doing what we are fashioned to do, no matter the outcome. I want you to think about something right now. What are five of the most important choices you've made in your life? Just think about that for a second. Begin to list them off in your head. Five of the most important choices you've made in your life. What are the five most important choices of your life? Just think about them for a second. And if you altered those five choices, good, bad, or indifferent, how different would your life be today? Because I'm a believer that there's everyday choices we make that when you stack them up, they make a massive difference in our life. But I'm also a believer that there are between five and 10, a handful of moments in everybody's life that if we make the proper choices in those moments, the complete trajectory of our life changes. And I think as you just asked yourself that question, you may say there haven't been five, there's been two. What were they? And how'd they alter the direction of your life? I make the case consider continually that there's no such thing as atomized individuality. And so, for, for example, if you're going to treat yourself properly, which you should, you have to treat yourself as an iterated process across time properly. So you today, you tomorrow, you next week, you next month, you when you're old, you're already a community if you're going to treat yourself properly. And if you treat yourself properly, you're going to take into account your family, and you're also going to take into account your community, all simultaneously. But the right place to start is with the things that worth are within your local control, and there's some humility in that. It's, it certainly has nothing to do with instantaneous self-gratification or selfishness. And he said the common denominator of success is informing the habit of doing things that failures don't like to do. Failure means you've now learned another valuable lesson that pushes you one step closer to success. Failure is not the end all. It's, it's, and, and, and it's clear about that. And you've got to be willing to f go with that bend because that bend in the road is the only way. Success is not a straight line. It's, it's crooked, it's down in the valley, it's back up over a mountain. You could tell much about a man's character by how much truth he could tolerate, which is, very interesting, you know, there's an, uh, an idea of the truth is the way and the path of life and, and that no one comes to the Father except through the truth. And I believe that to be the case because I don't think that you can manifest who you are without the truth. And so I think it's, it's, it's literally and metaphorically true. The, the pathway to who you could be if you were completely who you were is through the truth. And so the truth does set you free, but the problem is, is that it destroys everything that isn't worthy in you as it sets you free, and that's, that's a process of burning. And it's, it's painful, because you cling to what you shouldn't be, um, partly out of pride, and partly out of ignorance, and partly out of laziness. And, and so then you encounter something true, and you all know this, you all know this perfectly well, because uh, when was the last time that you learned something important that wasn't a, a blow of, of some sort, you know? And, and it's often you look back at your life and you think, oh God, I really learned something there, I wouldn't want to do that again, but it really changed my life. I mean, sometimes it can really destroy you, you know, an encounter with the truth, and you never really recover, but now and then something comes along and straightens you out, and a lot of you has to go. A lot of you has to burn away, you know, and, and, and I suppose in some sense the idea is that everything about you that isn't worthy is to be put into the flames. And that's, that's another reason to be not so casual about claiming what you believe, because it isn't something that you undertake out due caution. See, life loves you. Life really loves you. But if you don't love yourself, it's very hard for life to bring you the goodies because you've got this wall up. So when you can learn to love who you are, and that's the way you were born, 
when you were a little tiny baby, we all adored ourselves. We loved our bodies, we loved every part of ourselves. And then we started to listen to other people who told us we weren't good enough, or we didn't do it right, or no, no, no. And so we decided that maybe we weren't very good. And that's where we get all mixed up. But when we can get back to that point of just adoring this marvelous critter in here, mm -hmm. then life says, oh, she's got it, she's got it, let's give her goodies. Mm -hmm. And then the next step is to be very grateful about it. Yes. When you're really grateful, then they want to give you more. When you're balanced properly between order and novelty, that manifests itself to you as deep engagement. And that's a signal. And it's not merely cognitive, it's way deeper than that, that you're in the right place doing the right thing at the right time. And everyone wants that all the time. But images of paradise are representations of that state of being. So it's there for you, but there are preconditions that you strive to aim at the best. And that has to be your fundamental ethos. And it's a decision that despite all of the calamities of being, that your primary ethical obligation is to work for the betterment of yourself and others. How come it's seven billion humans in the world you felt lonely? How come you lack the sense of agency, control, authority in your life? Why were you in so much emotional pain? The loneliness, the lack of power, uh, the lack of control, the anxiety, these are forms of emotional pain. So my mantra on addiction is not why the addiction, but why the pain? What it actually is, is an attempt to solve a human life problem that of emotional pain, loneliness, distress, anxiety, whatever it is. And the real question then is, what happened in my life that we incurred pain? And then how do we deal with our pain? Because the addiction itself magnifies the pain. It, it, it multiplies it, it increases it exponentially. So it begins in pain, as, as Eckhart Tolle, the spiritual teacher says, and they end in pain. have to do the process. The process is non-negotiable. It's just, you have to do it. All right, so if you have to do something, I don't have highs about it or lows about it. I know it has to get done. And if I let my emotions get involved in it, all right, it's not gonna get done to its best abilities. So if people say you gotta love the process and then something comes in the process that you don't really love, but well, you have to do it. You have to do it. You take emotions out of it, and you do it. The process is a non-negotiable thing. All right, the end result is not always there. That win isn't always there. You can go through the whole process and somebody went through, didn't be as meticulous as you, and they may get that win. Because winning has no loyalty to any of us. You know, people that don't work as hard, they end up getting, they end up getting that win. People that aren't as qualified for the job, they end up getting that they end up getting that win. Do you stop the process? No. You continue to get more maniacal with the process over and over and over again. Because you, it's through the humanities that you that you make contact with the magic of your culture. And that makes you more than merely the child of your parents. Because you are more than merely the child of your parents, you're the child of nature, and you're the child of culture. And until you understand what that means, understand that you have two sets of parents, like the divine hero always has two sets of parents, you, you can't construe yourself properly as an individual. You're not situated properly in the world. You don't know what your responsibilities are. You can't orient your values properly, and you will suffer from that. Because life is so difficult, you have to do something that's truly worthwhile in order to justify it. From time to time, you may stumble, 
fall. You will for sure count on this. No doubt. You will have questions. And you will have doubts about your path. But I know this, if you're willing to listen, to be guided by that still small voice that is the GPS within yourself, to find out what makes you come alive, you will be more than okay. You will be happy. You will be successful. And you will make a difference in the world. If you do what it is that you're called upon to do, which is to lift your eyes up above the mundane, daily, selfish, impulsive issues that might beset you and attempt to enter into a contractual relationship with that which you might hold in the highest regard, whatever that might be, to aim high and to make that important above all else in your life, that that fortifies you against the vicissitudes of existence like nothing else can. Truly believe that that's the most practical advice that you could possibly receive. Taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and two ideas it begins to take small steps, small risks. To not only take risks, but to be open to life, to accept new views, and to be open to new opinions. For while it may be frightening, it will also be rewarding. Because the chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. Never be discouraged. Never hold back. Give everything you got. And when you fall throughout life, and remember this, fall forward. Today matters. We over-exaggerate yesterday. We overestimate tomorrow. And if we all got our act together collectively and stop making things worse, because that's another thing people do all the time, not only do they not do what they should to make things better, they actively attempt to make things worse because they're spiteful or resentful or arrogant or deceitful or bundled together in an absolutely pathological package. If people stop really, really trying just to make things worse, we have no idea how much better they would get just because of that. And the failure of individuals to adopt the responsibility that they know they should adopt. Because it isn't merely that your fate depends on whether or not you get your act together and to what degree you decide that you're going to live out your own genuine being. It isn't only your fate. It's the fate of everyone that you're networked with. And so, you know, you think, well, seven billion people in the world, and who are you? You're just one little dust moat among that seven billion. And so it really doesn't matter what you do or don't do, but that's simply not the case. It's the wrong model because you're at the center of a network. It's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done it better. The credit belongs to the person who's actually in the arena, who at the best, in the end, knows the triumph of high achievement and who at worst, if he fails, he fails daring greatly. It is not about winning, it's not about losing, it's about showing up 
and being seen. The second thing, this is who I want to be. I want to create. I want to make things that didn't exist before I touched them. I want to show up and be seen in my work and in my life. And if you're going to show up and be seen, there is only one guarantee, and that is you will get your ass kicked. So you have to decide at that moment, if courage is a value that we hold, this is a consequence. Running through the tape in your mind, telling yourself you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough, you're not smart enough, you're not enough. If you're not conscious of that, then you end up acting out of that belief system and not out of what you know to be the truest or want to be the truest for yourself. You don't become what you want because so much of wanting is about living in the space of what you don't have. Your better future is a dream for yourself and for your family. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to see? You've got to dream dreams. Without dreams and visions, people perish. You've got to have something to go for that inspires the heart and the soul. The dreams of love and enterprise and travel and doing things, becoming something unique on your journey here. Don't lose your dream. Do some dreaming. You're doing something that you don't want to do, so you want to postpone it. I'm asking, why the hell are you doing something that you don't want to do? No, because if I do this, I will get that, I will get that. That's not the point. There's nothing to get in this life. There's really nothing to get in this life. Either you lived this life in a profound and intense manner, or you did not. What will you get in the end? So in the end, what will happen to you and me? They will either bury us or burn us. That's all will happen in the end. You think something else, they'll give you a prize? Nothing will happen in the end. Only thing is the process of life, how wonderfully did you live? That's all there is. So if you're doing something really wonderful, do you want to prepone it or postpone it? So you must find what is it that you really want to do. If you find that one thing, you will always prepone everything, not postpone. And so that's how you're connected and the things you do, they're like dropping a stone in a pond. The ripples move outward and they affect things in ways that you can't fully comprehend. And it means that the things that you do and that you don't do are far more important than you think. I know you, you were too short, you had bad skin, you couldn't talk to them very well, words didn't seem to work, they lied when they came out of your mouth, you tried so hard to understand them, you wanted to be part of what was happening, you saw them having fun, and it seemed like such a mystery almost magic, made you think that there was something wrong with you. You'd look in the mirror trying to find it. You thought that you were ugly and that everyone was looking at you. So you learned to be invisible, to look down, to avoid conversation. The hours, days, weekends, Ah, uh, the weekend nights alone. Where were you? In the basement? In the attic? In your room? Working some job? Just to have something to do? Just to have a place to put yourself? Just to have a way to get away from them? 
a chance to get away from the ones that made you feel so strange and ill at ease inside yourself? Did you ever get invited to one of their parties? You sat and wondered whether you would go or not? For hours, you imagined the scenarios that might transpire. They would laugh at you. If you would know what to do. If you would have the right things on. If they would notice that you came from a different planet. Did you get all brave in your thoughts? Like you're going to be able to go in there and deal with it? And have a great time? Did you think that you might be the life of the party? That all these people were going to talk to you? And you would find out that you were wrong? That you had a lot of friends? And you weren't so strange after all? Did you end up going? Did they mess with you? Did they single you out? Did you find out that you were invited because they thought that you were so weird? Yeah, I think I know you. You spent a lot of time full of hate. A hate that was pure sunshine. A hate that saw for miles. A hate that kept you up at night. A hate that filled your every waking moment. A hate that carried you for a long time. Yes, I think I know you. You couldn't figure out what they saw in the way they lived. Home was not home. Your room was home. A corner was home. The place they weren't, that was home. I know you. You're sensitive. And you hide it because you fear getting stepped on one more time. It seems that when you show a part of yourself that is the least bit vulnerable, someone takes advantage of you. One of them steps on you. They mistake kindness for weakness. But you know the difference. You've been the brunt of their weakness for years. And strength is something you know a bit about. Because you've had to be strong to keep yourself alive. You know yourself very well now. And you don't trust people. You know them too well. You try to find that special person. Someone you can be with. Someone you can touch. Someone you can talk to. Someone you won't feel so strange around. And you found that they don't really exist. You feel closer to people on movie screens. Yeah, I think I know you. You spend a lot of time daydreaming. Telling you that you're self-involved and self-centered. But they don't know, do they? About the long night shifts alone. About the years of keeping yourself company. All the nights you wrapped your arms around yourself. So you could imagine someone holding you. The hours of indecision, self-doubt, the intense depression, the blinding hate, the rage that made you stagger, the devastation of rejection. Well, maybe they do know. But if they do, they sure do a good job of hiding it. It astounds you how they can be so smooth. How they seem to pass through life as if life itself was some divine gift. And it infuriates you to watch yourself 
with your apparent skill at finding every way possible to screw it up. For you, life is a long trip, terrifying and wonderful. Birds sing to you at night. The rain and the sun, the changing seasons are true friends. Solitude is a hard-won ally, faithful, patient. Yeah, I think I know you. If you want an extraordinary life, if you want a magnificent life, which by my definition has nothing to do with me, it's life on your terms. The universe, from my experience, creates a window if you do want to change. If you do want help, a window is created. Now, it may not be the window you want, and it may not be this the fabulous straights that you want to open up, but there'll be a window, because all of a sudden your mindset is believing there's a window, and it believes that you can change. The mind has the tactical advantage over you at all times. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. And I think one of the most powerful things we're going to serve you is have you become clear of what the controlling force is that's controlling the quality of your life. And you and I both know it's not the amount of money in your pocket. It's not who you know. It's not even what you've been through. It's really the decisions you make moment to moment about a couple of different things. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. You could be in the best place and be absolutely miserable. You can live in a palace and be horrendously miserable. You can live on the street and be exuberantly joyful. Both are possible. So your experience of life is where your destiny is because it's your experience of life that determines the quality of your life, not where you are, where you're going, what you're doing. No, these things are only socially relevant. They are not existentially relevant. Existentially for you as you sit here, what is your experience of life? How profound is it? How pleasant is it? How wonderful is it? This is all that determines. Now it's time to just be out here on a journey through life, experiencing new things, new ideas, exposure. And that's what I realized. I, I wasn't, a lot of us don't expose ourselves to new things, new ideas. We're not open, open to different, open to change. One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go real well, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're happy and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. Everybody wants to win, but in order to know how to win, you gotta know how to lose, because you're gonna lose more than you're gonna win. But every time you lose, what are you gain from? This destiny, 100% you can take charge of. This because human experience is caused from within. Pain and pleasure, joy and misery, agony and ecstasy happens from within us. So when it is happening from within us, at least what is happening from within us must happen my way. What is happening from within me must happen my way. What is around me is not all mine. Everybody has their peace in it. Maybe I also have a peace, I can push for a bigger peace, but that's it. There is never going to be any time for any human being where the external situations will be 100% the way you want it. It never ever will happen. But what is within me must be 100% the way I want, otherwise I'm a lost case. Sometimes your life will be in a slump, just like sports. Some of the best shooters can't hit baskets different times in games. They get in a slump. Do they sit on the sideline and say, you know, I just didn't hit a basket today? No, they continue to execute. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy, work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. 
Continue to move. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Winning is not about the trophy and the accolades. It's about the grind. It's about the obstacles. It's about the challenges. It's about the pain that you endure along the way. So the way out, first and foremost, we want to become conscious. We want to see those patterns. We want to see ourselves operating. We want to learn how to consciously become an observer of ourselves. For a lot of us, that's the first practice because consciousness is a, it's a practice. There's only one way you succeed long term. Anybody can get lucky and do something for a period of time. But real success in any measure whatsoever comes when you do more for others than anybody else. To me, everything's about breathing, right? Like to me, everything is about like take full ownership for everything and then everything gets easy because then you're in control. I think one of the most important success attributes is open-mindedness and because open-mindedness also breeds curiosity. Um, and if we are open-minded and curious, um, we are generally um, in a great position to find those lanes inside of which we will excel. Your passion is for you, your purpose is for others. Your passion makes you happy, but when you use your passion to make a difference in someone else's life, that's a service, that's a purpose, and that's the hand. I urge everyone out there to create change for themselves, and you do it by practicing a new thought, by over time allowing in a little more confirmatory evidence of that new thought, and then before you know it, you do start to see more and more evidence, and now you've lived the experience of changing the belief. Because when you understand the power of a five-second decision, and you understand that you always have a choice to go from autopilot to decision maker, everything in your life will change. You will be a different negotiator, you will be different in sales, you will be unstoppable in the gym, because you will realize the amount of garbage that you put in the way of your hopes, of your dreams, of your potential, of your confidence, of your courage. Everything comes down to the decisions that you make. There's something you want in your life really bad. And I know the secret to making that happen, the only secret that exists is getting out of your own way. Finding all the myriad ways that you trip yourself up. See, a lot of us, because of our limited vision of ourselves, a lot of us who begin to focus on problems and enable them to overwhelm us, we begin to think that we have no options. We begin to believe that there's no way out. You've got to make those kind of declarations to yourself. I'm unstoppable. This will not get me down. Knowing where you are in your world today, but maybe your second worst day, it's time to make the best day. Because out of every tragedy, out of every pain, it only gets healed when we find a deeper meaning. When we find there's a higher purpose in it.